to be rather successful. Helicopter. Helicopter, a wingless aircraft, designed by the Stalin Prize winner engineer Bratuhin. This aircraft can take off without a run from any spot, a building roof or a piece of ice. It will have great future in the civil aviation and national economy. The first training air squadron was formed of those machines. Although pilots flew within the limits of the airdrome at low altitude and minor speed. Attitude toward helicopters was ironic and relaxed and more often suspicious. How this thing could fly without the wing? Wondered pilots coming to fly helicopters after mastering several types of aircraft. But this did not stop Bertuchin. In 1945, his design bureau started to develop a whole series of helicopters of different designations. All of them were based on the same side-by-side -side layout. Aerodynamics was improved by substituting truss structure for a wing. Different types of fuselage were supposed to be suspended under it depending on the tasks performed. There came different machines one after another. The B-5 passenger machine. The B-9 ambulance. The B-10 airborne surveillance unit the B-11 liaison version. However, works went through hardships. One of the prototypes crushed. Test pilot Konstantin Ponomarev and radio operator Igor Nilus died. This produced a negative impact on the Design Bureau's reputation and it was closed in spring 1951. Progress in this unknown direction was slow because helicopter development topic was not even among the first ten in the list and funding was therefore scanty. The side-by-side -side layout chosen by Bratuchin was not simple. It required time and money. In the beginning of 1945, works on helicopters were started in one of the leading design bureaus of Alexander Yakovlev. The successful wartime designer thought he would manage to cope with helicopters as well. The layout chosen for the prototype machine seemed to be simple, coaxo. When the work assignment was received in the design bureau, someone asked, Is it a joke? The head of the team replied, No, this is serious. We shall design a helicopter and will give it a definition J, a joke. The very first test flights brought numerous helicopter problems to designers. The coaxial layout was too complicated. So Yakovlev decided to try a more simple layout proven successful on American helicopters. His single rotor Yak-100 built in 1948 resembled one of the earlier Sikorsky helicopters. The three-seat machine demonstrated good flight characteristics and was recommended for the combat service. However, by that time, a similar helicopter designed by Mikhail Mil was already in production. It was decided inexpedient to produce two similar machines. Mikhail Mil was dealing with a rotor wing machine since the 30s. After the war in Sagi, he designed and built a natural size helicopter assembly. It was so well done that represented, in fact, a ready helicopter. Therefore, on December 12, 1947, a governmental resolution was issued on the establishment of the Mill Design Bureau as an independent helicopter-producing institution. 
The first product of this design bureau was MI-1 light helicopter. The small three-seat machine took off in September 1948, piloted by Matvei Baikalov. Tests were dramatic. The first two prototypes crushed. While there were no victims in the first accident, in the second, test pilot Baikalov died. In spite of the failures, the young designer's team managed to make MI-1 operational. Although difficulties continued, the first series consisted of 15 helicopters, but producing even such a minor amount was not an easy task. With great difficulties, the first MI-1 prototypes were assembled at the Moscow Helicopter Factory. They were immediately introduced at the Tushina Air Show, the country leadership was attending. Attention is drawn by these strange aircraft. They have no wings, the rotor is above the cabin. They take off vertically. These are Soviet helicopters designed by engineer Mill. However, even after such a show, the aircraft-producing factories were reluctant to develop the strange and non-reputable equipment. The Army did not insist, while the civil aviation did not express any interest to the helicopter at all. In order to overcome indifference, in summer 1951, enthusiasts of the new equipment organized a show specially for Joseph Stalin. MI-1 flew to the leader's country house in Sochi and showed unique takeoff and landing characteristics in the mountains. Just like anything new, helicopters' way to recognition was no simple. Works on the rotor wing machine were resumed after the war by Nikolai Kamov. First of all, he managed to introduce helicopter specialization in the aircraft construction faculty of the Moscow Aviation Institute. The first come of students became his supporters. Luck came when the USSR Navy Command backed up the KA-8 Superlight Helicopter Project. The small designers group started their work and in autumn 1947 the helicopter was made. Kamov named it the Irkutyanin in honor of his birthplace. The one-seat KA-8 belonged to the super-light class, the so-called flying motorbikes. Its takeoff weight was only 320 kilograms. In other countries, helicopters of such a weight category were made upon a twin-rotor coaxial layout. They were compact with good payload and seamed perspective. However, the layout was not simple. Tests showed ground resonance problems and flatter, in other words, vibration might cause helicopter's destruction. Those were not the last problems faced by the young team. 1948 was not the best year for experiments. The Soviet aviation industry was under severe personnel reduction. According to the order of June 1, 1948, funding of KA-8 was terminated. Probably we would have never heard of Kamov anymore if it had not been for the Stalin's son Vasily, who was commander of the Moscow Aviation District and a big fan of technical sports. He took Kamov's group under his patronage placed it in one of the military units and ordered to get ready for the air parade. In August 1948 in Tushina, pilot Mikhail Gurov brilliantly took off and landed Irkutyanin on board of a truck. Commenting the KA-8 flight, the announcer pronounced the word helicopter for the first time. In September of the same year, the Kamov Design Bureau was officially established. 
At first, the team was assigned to develop an improved KA-10 version on the basis of KA-8. Its 